staff decided, because there were so many kids concerned about social political issues mm. and trauma, that and just their own personal interests, that we ought to have a community service time too during mm. the week. So for two and a half hours once a week, every Thursday afternoon, kids are, we actually did it, did it in the morning, Thursday morning, kids rather than reporting to school would report to their community service site. And they mm -hmm. had a choice in terms of who they would work with and what organization, mm -hmm. why they wanted to do it. We would get feedback, agreements with their supervisors there to give us feedback as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, having kids out, you know, not only in terms of a focus on a career, because that could work sideways. I mean, it right, could right. be an addition <laughs> to their real career interests, but having, having them out there in the community actively participating and mm -hmm. in some cases even having the organization become dependent on them mm, <laughs> for right. what they were providing to that uh, place and, all, and also what the organization was providing to the kid yeah, was yeah. A, a crucial aspect. Yeah, the other thing that we built into the organizational structure was decision-making time. Believing that kids ought to play a prominent role in terms of individual, classroom, school-wide, and community, local, neighborhood, city, mm -hmm. state, and national decision-making. Kids ought to have a time to do that so that hmm. if they decide that they want to go down and hear the Biden speak downtown or Trump mm -hmm. speak, you know, they ought to be able to go down and do it, you know, to, uh, to learn more. If there's a problem of bullying in the school, what mm -hmm. are we going to do about this? Can we generate a proposal? Can we do some investigation in groups and find out what what would what might work in this particular environment in terms of discouraging bullying and encouraging more positive relationships mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. kinds of things uh, what are we going to do uh, another one what are we going to do about the homeless people who are coming to use mm -hmm. our uh, picnic tables during lunchtime you know mm -hmm. is there a way mm -hmm. that we can work this out so decision making was great and in some cases if teachers wanted to call a town meeting in which mm. the whole school would get together in the gymnasium all-purpose room, we could present a problem to them and say, okay, go right. back to your extended classes now, discuss it, see if you can generate some proposals, and float a proposal around, you send reps around to each of your extended classes to vote on it and bring mm. it back. One of the things we found out that with town meetings originally back in 1971 when the school started is that all decisions for the school would be made through a town meeting. Hmm, okay. All 170 kids plus the 10 staff would get together and they'd hash it out. The problem with that was that it ended up being that the kids and teachers who could talk the loudest and the longest <laughs> ended up staying after school would end and a lot of the kids would leave and they'd end up making the decisions, you know, right, as opposed right. to the, the school, you know. So that's why we turn more toward extended class decision making as opposed mm. to town meetings, even though we completely didn't reject uh, town meetings. Right, right. So, um, so that's one of those things that, that I've been finding in, in e almost without exception, uh, actually without exception, <laughs> uh, is that any school that's been around long enough, has these kind of evolutions of their processes and and how they operate and and they discover things they discover that you know a hundred and eighty five people trying to make a decision together I, I just recently heard it that's called the babble effect is mm -hmm. that that whoever Power talks the most <laughs> it, it either gets appointed to the leadership position or ends up making the decision or whatever. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs, so that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs 
particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.